Doreen, thank you for inviting us to your home. This is so exciting that we can be here with you. I, I, you know, we've been here before, but what you have done is such an inspiration. It inspires me and Kathy. Jeff, you had some questions, I think. Well, Doreen, uh, it's good to see you again. I think we met about 11 years ago, <laughs> and, uh, and we've had a wonderful relationship since those days. Doreen, tell me about your childhood and where you grew up and how you became a Seventh-day Adventist. Yes, I was brought up poor because it was the Depression. My father had a brother who died when he was almost two. And of course, when I came along, I was supposed to be the boy. But anyway, we were poor. We always had food on the table. And one day, a lady knocked on the front door and said she was selling some magazines, Signs of the Times. Wow, yes. And that night when my father came home from work, my mother told my father, and he said, what kind of a magazine is it? Oh, it's a religious magazine. I don't want everything to do with religion, he said. He was still bitter about losing his son. Sure. And, uh, but he picked it up eventually and he read it and he liked what he read and the Lord grabbed him right there. <laughs> That's how the Lord worked. <laughs> and my father continued working and uh, we were going to another, a different denomination in the neighborhood at the time. When I was married in 1950, my parents had gone back and it was rebaptized. Wow. And that's when I learned about the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and I grasped it immediately. Amen. I said, it makes sense. <laughs> it <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> now, uh, Doreen, you and Richard travel a lot in your marriage, uh, not on big cruise ships, but on merchant ships. That's right. All the way to China, Greece, um, Egypt, Turkey, uh, I'm trying Israel. Wow. Um, to the South Pacific Islands, yes. Australia, two or three times, uh, Pitcairn Island, Mutiny on the Bounty yeah. Island, and uh, South America. You began giving to AWR back in 1993. Yes. $10 a month. Yeah. How did you learn about AWR and why did you start giving? Probably every month? in one of our Pacific Union recorder, okay. perhaps. Uh -huh. And I was thrilled when I read it. I was absolutely thrilled Amen. and I said that that is going to do it. Well, you have given consistently since that time every yes. month yes. for about 29 years. Plus. That long? <laughs> <laughs> Doreen, uh, you tell me some of the stories that you read in our Adventist papers that encouraged you to want to be I'm a partner. I'm trying, well, Guam, of course, was uh -huh. in there mm -hmm. first. Yeah. And uh, I was reading about Guam, and I thought, what a wonderful place to be, because you were down near China, and mm -hmm. Japan, and mm -hmm. Southeast Asia. Yeah. And I thought that's a great place to start mm -hmm. because these people are going to be eager. Yeah. Yeah. That was the reason we put it at Guam, so we could yes. broadcast from shortwave into those that's areas. That's right. Yeah. They're going to hear things they hadn't heard sure. before. Well, Doreen, uh, four or five years ago, you had me come to your home and showed me all of your Chinese and Japanese artwork that you and Richard had collected over those years. And uh, you told me you wanted to get rid of all that. What? What did you want to do? I, I wanted to get rid of it, and I said, I want to give it to Adventist World Radio. When we sold it, it was not the best time to sell that sort of thing, but the Lord blessed, didn't he? They kept telling us that, uh, I even got in touch with one of our um, antique dealers in uh, Laguna San Beach, Diego. Yeah. California, and I sent uh, the pictures of the ones that we would, I would be selling and some he had sold to us. Yes. So he knew the prices. And uh, he said, well, uh, sales are flat right now. The Lord helped us find a man named Jim Friend. And Jim Friend took it on as a spiritual project. And uh, he said, my grandfather was a minister and he said he would be proud of what I'm doing. And he actually sold every single piece, even though the gentleman from San Diego who'd sold you some of that said it wasn't worth anything. 
Wow. So it was something like $83,000. And I remember talking to you later, your house, the walls were all bare, and I said, Doreen, do you feel bad that your house is so bare now with all of your artwork gone? What did you tell me? They're only things. <laughs> <laughs> they were things. Thing. That's what they were. They represented money that was going to involve souls for Christ. And I recall you used the word joy. Yeah. The joy of seeing souls saved and uh, the things, yeah. not just decorating your walls anymore, but paying for radio waves to go to where missionaries can't go. Yes. Now you told me that, and in fact I, I helped you a bit with that, uh, you prepared an estate plan. Yes, uh, I got an attorney and uh, worked out a new will. And in, your, in, in your estate plan, you're remembering your children? They're going to take care of the grandchildren mm -hmm. because they're going to get a, a goodly amount and uh, they'll take care of the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren and the great-great-grandchildren. Uh -huh. And you were remembering AWR very generously in that estate plan. But last year you made a decision that you wanted to not wait till you died to make those major gifts, but to do them now. What led you to do that? Well, my mother lived to 93, and I am just turned 89. So uh, I'm giving myself my mother's age. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I could just see this money sitting there in this institution. Wow. And I thought, there it is, it's sitting there, when it could be working yeah. for Advance Romania. Yeah. So I went to my broker and I said, I want to sell a million dollars worth of my stock. And I want it in cash and I want to give it to my church. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I made a phone call to you after to thank you for that million dollar gift last year. And you used a three letter word to explain how you felt about it. It was that word joy again. It was joy. Amen. It's still joy. Amen. And I think of those towers being yeah. put up. Yeah. Are some going to the churches no, no. too? Oh yes, and Doreen, one of the main projects is yes. Manila. Uh, it's, it's the most populous city in the world. <laughs> and, and we don't have a broadcast for there, so we're going to take some of those funds and buy, we're in the process now of, of finishing that, buy a large radio station that will cover all of Metro Manila. Oh, that's Probably, wonderful. and well, they say at, in the daytime 22, 23 million, mm -hmm. at nighttime maybe for 18 million. Wow. So it'll cover all the, okay. all this huge city. You know, in that same area, people are so thirsting for the gospel. We just had a meeting all over the islands back in November. We preached it, we had a wonderful time there. 124,000 people were baptized. So with this thrust in Manila, we're going to continue to do the same kind of thing. Can you imagine that? Those things, things that were sitting on my shelves yeah, no. in my home yeah. have brought people to Christ. Right. Well, the Lord impressed you to give at just the moment the Lord was, the Holy Spirit was being poured out through Adventist World Radio in the Philippines to win more, and this is one of the largest baptisms in our history. Probably the largest it? in the history of the Adventist I mean, Church. Yeah. The second largest was Rwanda about oh, five, six years ago. 100,000 just over were baptized. But this is the largest, 124,000 baptized. Oh, where did you find all the pastors to do the work? How many hours oh, did it take? It was over several days. Over several days. Yeah. Come Lord Jesus. That's right. That's right. He's, he That's is, right. he's coming. Whoever is watching Amen. or listening to this, you can bet your life on it. Yep, thank you. Doreen, we are blessed. Adventist World Radio couldn't function without our partners, our donors, and people who give a dollar or two a month, and people who give large sums a month. And I often have people tell me, well, I wish I could give more. And I like to remind them that the Lord doesn't look at the amount. He looks at the heart. And, uh, th and that the Lord also enjoys multiplying the gifts that we give as he, to us personally and to God's work. And I think you've found out in your 29 years of giving to Adventist World Radio, haven't you? 
little did I think back then that I would be giving a million dollars away. But that when the Holy Spirit works on your heart, you know it. And I kept thinking of those things on the shelf mm -hmm. <laughs> that could go towards telling people about Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I really think that uh, one day soon when Jesus comes, that, that you and I and Sharon and Kathy and Doreen, we should be neighbors in heaven. That's right. <laughs> yes, definitely. In Tell fact, stories. I've asked the Lord for a job. Yeah. I don't care what it is, but I want a job in heaven. Well, also in heaven, we're going to have angels bringing up people to introduce them to us that our dollars helped win for Amen. the kingdom. Amen. And that will be thrilling. And a hug. That's right. <laughs> Doreen, uh, you have two children, yes. David and Jen. Tell me how they feel about your uh, giving to uh, Adventist World Radio. They're for it. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we ask Dave to come in? Okay, let's do that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dave, thank you so much for coming. It's great being here. Uh, Dave, when you learned of your mother's interest in Adventist World Radio, what did that do for you spiritually and personally? Um, I've been concerned for mom since dad's passing, and so I walk a tightrope on one hand on uh, giving mom her autonomy and respecting her wishes, but at the same time uh, giving her advice when uh, needed. Um, and so uh, I didn't question this or complain or uh, have any doubts, um, but as time went on and I learned more about the ministry, um, I felt that uh, this was the right investment, the, the best investment that she could make. Right. Uh, everything in this world is, is going to pass away, yeah. but what is eternal is Jesus and all the, his beautiful flock. And where our, our heart is, is where our treasure is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, and what better treasure than souls, than other souls? Amen. The redemption of Dave, souls. you, because of your mom's example, you've started giving to AWR too, is that right? Yes, and um, I'm going to continue the legacy. Uh, sure. I, and this was after a great deal of thought. Uh, this isn't anything that was off the sleeve or by impulse. It was out of a lot of thought and consideration and prayer. And a classmate of mine from Thunderbird Adventist Academy and I have discussed Adventist World Radio and after a great deal of discussion, and along with our theological discussions, we are both on the same page, and we're both committed to uh, the spreading of the gospel and the uplifting of Jesus uh, through this media, Amen. Through, through this venue. Well, your mom's been a good influence on you. Stop smiling. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, that's so important, is to have connections with our church and people yeah. in the church. Yeah. Why don't we have prayer together, shall we? Okay, good. Father in heaven, thank you for your love. It's a, a thrilling experience to talk to Doreen and how God has, has led them for the many years that they have served you. And I just pray you'll continue to bless them as only you can. And bless AWR as we take these special gifts that they continue to give to help finish your work all around the world so Jesus can come. Thank you for these blessings. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.